Pegasus spyware is one of the most fundamental attacks on democracy and human rights ever invented because it worms its way into the very inner sanctum of our lives by planting spyware on our phones in ways that we can't possibly detect, allowing the authorities to discover exactly what we're saying, who we're talking to, almost what we're thinking. They reach the point where they know almost more about ourselves than we do. And that means we no longer have private lives. We can't think, we can't act and write and speak freely because someone is listening in. It's as if the Stasi had superpowers and managed to worm its way into our very minds. This is a weapon which is just too powerful. It destroys politics in the way that a nuclear weapon destroys nations. You can't have an effective democracy if people's phones are being invaded with this spyware and governments are able to snoop on entirely peaceful democratic campaigners. It just doesn't work. Democracy fails in situations like that. Journalists around the world should be up in arms about this because what we've seen is that in some countries, like in Mexico, for example, the spyware has been used to target journalists and discover their movements and they've subsequently been killed. We should, all of us, inside and outside the media, be deeply worried about what's going on here. And yet the concerns are muted, they're ephemeral. We forget so quickly the extent to which our freedoms are being curtailed and taken away from us. This is my phone. I take it everywhere, apparently. But now imagine your biggest enemy sits in this phone. The person that wants to see you dead and there's nothing you can do about it because you don't even know it. We're often told by governments all over the world that, look, if you're not guilty of any crime, you have nothing to fear from state surveillance. Well, doesn't this Pegasus spyware scandal expose and explode that idea? Because what we're seeing is thousands of people guilty of no crime, in fact, who are just trying to make the world a better place. They are being spied upon and they have everything to fear from this software. Now, unless you're a total saint, we've all got things which we would prefer to keep to ourselves. Things we're ashamed of in the past, relationships that didn't go well. What this spyware can enable governments to do is to ensure that they've got something on all of us. Governments do this to their own MPs. The whips in the House of Commons, they have compromat on many of their MPs so that if people rebel against them, they say, wouldn't it be a shame if the newspapers got hold of this, that affair you had. Now they can do that to the whole nation. They can threaten to expose anyone who stands against the government with some sort of embarrassment from their past. At the same time, they're shutting down scrutiny of their own operations. And we see a whole series of new laws brought in to prevent whistleblowers from exposing what's really going on in government to expand the scope of official secrets acts and censorship. Our governments are turning politics into a one-way mirror where they learn more and more about our lives while we can see less and less of what they're doing. In the UK, for example, there's a long history of spying. As we've recently discovered, undercover cops have systematically infiltrated environmental and democratic campaigns to the extent that they've become, in some cases, almost leaders of those campaigns. They have deceived women into having relationships and even having children with them in order to give themselves cover. We've seen, thanks to the revelations by Edward Snowden, how GCHQ in the UK, but also how the US intelligence agencies have systematically spied on peaceful campaigners. But now with the advent of technologies like the Pegasus spyware developed by an Israeli company, we see that taken to a whole new level. And my fear is that with the help of this technology and all the other new techniques which have been developed recently by autocratic governments, they can effectively rule forever. They've developed since the end of the Cold War a highly effective strategy for staying in power. And that is to maintain the outward form of democratic structures. So you still have your parliament, you still have your elections, but to hollow them out to such an extent that they no longer mean anything. You transfer power 
out of those structures and into another place, into the hands of your inner circle, your sofa cabinet, guarded from democratic challenge, into the hands of oligarchs and corporate lobbyists. You remove power from the nation state by offshoring it. You pass your business through tax havens and secrecy regimes. You find all sorts of ways of basically shutting down democracy, of nailing down the political future so that things can't change. And Pegasus spyware is an immensely powerful weapon that allows you to do that. What we've seen happening is the development of a massive global surveillance industry, largely private, but of course intersecting with public agencies all the time in ways which we've only just begun to grasp, which has almost unlimited powers over our lives and is scarcely regulated. And attempts to regulate it are way behind the curve. They scarcely even touch the new technologies which are being used. And this puts us in a really vulnerable position because not only does it ensure that the states which want to use this technology become inordinately powerful and achieve a great inequality of political arms, but it also grants enormous power to the private owners and operators of the surveillance technology. Inaction is no longer an option. If you don't do anything to stop the sale of this technology, it's not just going to be 50,000 targets, it's going to be 50 million targets, and it's going to happen much more quickly than any of us expect. The way we do that is to halt the trade around this technology. It doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter what you do. Your position isn't going to protect you. If you're a minister, a prime minister, guess what? You're on the list. If you're an ordinary person, guess what? You are on the list too. All you have to do is come to the attention of somebody with money to pay any one of these companies for the tools to break into your phone. What the Pegasus Project has revealed is a sector where their only product are infection vectors, right? They, they don't, um, they're not security products. They're not providing any kind of protection, any kind of prophylactic. They don't make vaccines. The only thing they sell is the virus. In the billionaire press and on the right wing more generally, we've been assailed now for years by people saying, we are the free speech warriors. We're trying to prevent cancel culture. We're trying to prevent people from being deplatformed. But many of them have been completely silent about this massive intrusion on our freedoms. I mean, this is the biggest cancel culture there could ever be. This massive chilling of free speech and democracy by spying on people through their phones. And yet the so-called free speech warriors are silent on it. One source of hope is that this was exposed, is that we now know about Pegasus spyware and we now know how widely it has been deployed. And that's because a coalition of journalists, people who care about these issues, came together around the world to process this massive leak, this trove of material we urgently need. The last bastions of resistance within the media but within civil society more generally, to constantly fight and expose this and to come together in even larger numbers than before. Perhaps we don't have many more years in which we can still act democratically and expect to have results. In some countries, it seems that that window has already closed. Well, we must ensure wherever possible that we keep that window open as much as we can. In situations like this, resistance becomes even more necessary. We urgently need the most effective alternative media we can get, which can constantly bring these issues into the forefront of people's minds. So please support Double Down News by becoming a patron on Patreon. Thank you.